Life as we know it needs water to survive. The continued search for life in the universe has depended first and foremost on finding liquid water. In the Sonoran Desert, this precious resource is scant and continually tested by heat and dry conditions. The arid climate limits rainfall to approximately 12 inches each year, most of which comes from the annual monsoon. Harvesting that rain has become a passion for some Tucsonans, including Logan Byers. And so we're going to be harvesting gray water and the stormwater runoff. And this is going to be really great for our citrus tree here. Byers, a local landscape designer, makes the connection between life and rain. It's important for people to get involved in rainwater harvesting here, especially in Tucson in the Sonoran Desert, because we are water. Show me something that's alive that doesn't need water. Most scientists agree with Byers. People are mostly water. As much as 60% of the human body is made up of water, the heart and the brain, 75%. We need water to survive, as do plants, trees, and animals. While rainwater here is scarce in comparison to some regions, Tucson receives its fair share, Byers says. We get enough rain on each residential property to have a beautiful, lush environment like this if we would just harvest it. So I feel like everyone has that opportunity, and I want to be someone that, that helps that move along. We've got the spillway here. She helps move it along by creating landscape features that capture the rain when it falls. Like how it comes around the tree here. Byers designed and built a series of rainwater collection basins along the southern edge of this property in the Dunbar Spring neighborhood. So when we get a big rain, that water comes all the way um, through those basins into here, and it fills up pretty good. After one of those big rains, Byers stood knee-deep in rainwater that collected in the drainage basins. The bulk of the work involved breaking up and removing the pre-existing concrete. Drainage swales and check dams slowed the water and allowed it to filter into the ground. We had four people doing the rock work, two people bringing us the rocks, and then two setting the rocks, and it took three hours. That work is paying off. Now when the rains come, the water collects and feeds surrounding plants and trees. Shortly after moving to Tucson from Flagstaff in 2006, Byers remembers seeing a man in the rain. One morning, it was about 6 a.m., I was riding my bicycle to a, uh, my cafe job down on 4th Avenue, and I saw Brad Lancaster out in the street. It was a morning monsoon, and he had this two by six, and he was directing the water to flow into his basins. At the time, she was not familiar with the ecology of the desert or the benefits of rainwater harvesting. That encounter with Lancaster changed her perspective and how she sees her role. And I think that image really stuck with me, that, that drive to, like, to really be dedicated to the desert and to really show the neighbors and to show the community that it is sustainable to live here, even on the, the small amount of rain that we get. Brad Lancaster is well known and respected in the rainwater harvesting community and has written two books on the subject. He has spearheaded efforts to capture rain in the Dunbar Spring neighborhood near downtown Tucson. In the public right-of-way alone, he says they are harvesting 660,000 gallons of water per year that were previously lost to runoff and evaporation. One of the most effective strategies he advocates is the curb cut. I'm basically walking the flow of the water. So as it flows along the street and the street curb, we then access that water by cutting the curb. So now the water that used to flow down the street and out of the neighborhood flows in to the street side basin to irrigate street side trees. So the street irrigates the street trees which shade and cool the street. If you don't want to do a curb cut, you can do a curb core, which just is a four inch diameter hole and the water just comes through the hole. It just doesn't have as great a capacity as a curb cut. The byproduct of water harvesting and tree planting in Dunbar Spring is the continued growth of a cooling shade canopy, one that attracts native wildlife, produces food, and encourages interaction between neighbors. The curb cut is just one of the ways that folks in Dunbar Spring are harvesting rain. Lancaster offers this encouragement to people in other neighborhoods. My advice would be just start. Just start with simple basins beside or beneath your plants uh, if you're about to plant a new plant. And also just go and see other sites where people are doing it so you get a better understanding of what it's like. Read, read some books about it. Go to some free talks. And then start talking to your neighbors and work together because it's so much more fun 
and the, the work is so much quicker if you work together. Brad Lancaster and his neighbors are working together to build community and harvest the rain. Beyond the here and now, he sees a legacy. If this is your home, wherever you are, uh, it makes sense to enhance that place so that it's a better life for us now, our kids, and everyone to follow.